back to the book of First John, chapter number five, and uh, we've got just about five or six minutes this morning, so I would like to kind of springboard off of where we were at uh, yesterday, and there's certainly a lot of scripture that we could go through, and I do not want to become redundant in our devotion, but notice what in First John, chapter number five, and down in verse number four and five, and we'll read these just for the uh, sake of time, it says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? We spoke yesterday just briefly on the subject matter of being an overcomer. And we looked at the scripture, this passage gave personal testimony that one of the first things that must be done before we can actually be a victorious overcomer over our sin and the habits that we've got, sinful. A lot of people use the word habits, but I like to look at it as sin because most habits are sinful in nature. And so the first step in overcoming uh, sin in our lives and overcoming the world is to be saved, put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Without Christ living in the heart, we have no power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so by Christ living in the heart, taking up a boat in the heart and soul of man, uh, we have an inward strength and inward power to be able to overcome sin. I want you, if you would, this morning, we'll go to a couple of verses of Scripture, and then I will go to one passage of Scripture and kind of lay the foundation, the Lord willing, for tomorrow. But I want you to look with me, if you would, please. We'll go over to the book of uh, Romans, and then in chapter number 8, notice he says in chapter number 8, in verse number 37, he says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So again, notice it attributes that if we're going to be conquerors, it's only through Christ in which we can overcome our sin and we can conquer those things in our life. Notice he says in verse number 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so again, uh, we find that it is attributed, uh, that overcoming and then victorious is attributed in the text to Jesus Christ and Christ alone. And notice, if you would please, the foundation it's laid that neither height nor death and so on and so forth can separate us from the love of God. Now, it's not talking in the passage of Scripture of our love toward God, but God's love toward us. And so in this passage of Scripture, we find again that overcoming victorious uh, over our sin and our nature uh, and the uh, lost condition that we're in, it can only come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then notice, if you would please, in 1 Corinthians and uh, chapter number 15, and then notice verse number uh, 57. Just a, qu a quick verse, and I want to go to another verse and lay a foundation of the Lord willing for tomorrow. In verse number 57, Paul's writing to the church at Corinth in his first letter to that very worldly secular church. He said, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find that again, Paul attributes our victorious Christian life to Christ and only God can give us victory over our sins and over the world and overcome the things of the world and not just uh, of the things that beset us, but the deep sins of the heart. You know, everyone sitting here, as I said yesterday, all of us have things that beset us. Um, all of us have struggles in some areas. There are some sitting here this morning, no doubt, if they found out an individual was doing something, it may not be considered a, quote, great sin, unquote, or some deep sin, per se. I know that sin is sin before God. I'm not trying to categorize sin in any shape, form, or fashion. The Bible makes that very clear. He puts lying in with whoremongers and murderers and, and so forth in the Scripture. So God has no category of sin, although the Bible teaches that there will be degrees in hell. And as we consider this matter, I want you to understand that as we battle these things in our life, there are some things that I have may have great victory over that are stumbling blocks to you. There may be things that you have great victory over that doesn't bother you that are great hindrances to me. And so as we consider this matter, we all have areas that we battle with. And regardless of the level of the sin in our own mind among men, not among God or in God's presence, uh, there are degrees that we need to overcome and be victorious in our Christian life. Now notice if you would please in 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 5, and we'll begin reading in verse number 23. In 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 verse 23, 
and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to just break the ice tip on something here really quick. And that is, I believe that if we want to be overcomers and victorious in our life, we must first know Jesus Christ our Savior. We must be saved. I believe that it is impossible to have a complete victory, victory over sin without Christ. I know there's Alcoholics Anonymous, there's uh, Sexaholic Anonymous, there's alcohol, there's uh, everything you can imagine. They had anger addiction programs when I was a chaplain in Wyoming. They had a sexual addictions program when I was in Wyoming. They even had one group that came in and had a lying addiction program. Well, everybody, if they do that, I'm afraid we'd have to sign everybody up for that one. But, uh, you know, they've got every type of a program you can imagine uh, inside the prison. But I, and I often told them uh, not to rebuke the counselors and others, but I tell the men that come to me straight up and say they were struggling with these, and I said, look, you can go to A-A-N-A-S-A, A-B-C, X-Y-Z, in, uh, anything you want to go to. But if you want true victory over your sin, you're going to have to come to know Christ as your personal Savior. Salvation is the only way to have a permanent uh, victory, victory in your life. And so you must know Christ and salvation. And then the second step, and there's a lot that can be said, but I believe we have to have a full surrender. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the warfare comes in. We want to hold on to the world with one hand, hold on to Christ in the other hand, yeah. and we're caught between the tug of war and the pull, and the Holy Ghost of God, when he lives in our heart, is going to lead us in the pathways of truth and righteousness. But we must come to the place that we know Christ in salvation and that we must come to the place we have a full surrender to God. Amen. Without a full surrender to God, as long as there is one hand in the world, a one hand holding on to the desires of the flesh, there will be a continual nonstop struggle. And the truth of the matter is, it's these days you get in trouble for using any kind of analogy, but I'm going to use it uh, because I believe it's a great illustration. I thought about the Indian that got saved and gave his life to the Lord and uh, the preacher asked him one day said uh, how are you doing he said well I'm doing pretty good he said but uh, sometimes I'm tempted to do wrong and other times I'm uh, desire to do right and and the preacher said well which one wins the most and the Indian looked at him he said well the, it's like a dog fighting and he said it's the one I feed the most that wins and you know that's where it is in our life if we feed the world the flesh and the desires we make for provisions to fulfill the lust of the flesh the flesh is going to win but if we're in our Bible and prayer and we're surrendering to God and we're surrendering our body, soul, and spirit unto the Lord, then guess who's going to win? The Holy Spirit's going to win and we're going to be victorious in our Christian life because we're willing to let go of the world and we're willing to commit our life to Christ. No greater illustration in the Bible than when we find Moses uh, there on that day when he went out at 40 years old according to the book of Acts. And uh, he saw the afflictions of God's people and the Bible said in Hebrews 11 that he chose rather to suffer the afflictions of God's people than the riches of Egypt. And so there was that tug of war. There was that struggle in his life. But there came that day when he made the conscious decision, I'm just going to go all out for God and his people. I'm going to fully surrender to God and look what God did with him. Amen. And so there must be salvation. And I've already gone over two minutes, but it, there must be a full surrender. Brother Robert, give us a course, please. I have